<laughs> Greetings and salutations. Welcome, welcome, beautiful beans all. We are here on this very happy International GM's Day. Yeah, it's International GM's Day, everyone. Happy International GM's Day. If you are a GM, if you are international, then happy International GM's Day. If you're not international, still happy International GM's Day. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, a big shout out to all the GMs. Go and send your GM some love. Why not do it right now? Just open a second window, send them a little message saying, hey, it's International GM's Day and you're amazing. Yeah, do it, make it happen. Let's spread some love. And in the meantime, we're gonna talk about a very serious issue that actually is a very serious issue. I'm saying it with a big smile on my face because Michael's here and I love him, but it's a serious issue, GM burnout. Uh, it's something that makes our GMs sad, the lovely GMs in our life. We don't want this to happen. So today we're gonna to talk about what it is, how it happens, and how we can either prevent it from happening or, or tend to it when it does. But before we get into all of these things, let me introduce the fabulous, the one, the only, it's the Dead Aussie Gamer. Michael, how are you doing? G'day guys! Hi, my name is Michael, I'm the Dead Aussie Gamer, and I am doing absolutely splendiferously today. And I cannot wait to talk to you about this topic because, you know, it's one that is like so near and dear to me because... Um, for those of you who uh, haven't seen me around, um, I am a Twitch streamer, uh, an entertainer who specializes in TTRPGs, and specifically in the field of mental wellness and uh, gaming through positivity and stuff like that, including um, like GM burnout. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm very, very keen to talk about this because it is probably... Uh, as much as role-playing games help us grow as people and really can contribute so much to our mental wellness, um, DM burnout is the, I guess, uh, you can almost say backlash, the, the the recoil that can happen when we take things a little too far. And uh, yeah, it's 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 a topic that we can sometimes like forget is an important one to to bring up, to check in with your GM, to say, hey, are you okay? You know, and uh, and offer that support. And uh, yeah, yeah. And plus, I get to talk with someone who I, I know understands this uh, firsthand, dealing with so many GMs and so many entertainers like myself. Um, I think we are going to get to the bottom of so many people's um, you know various experiences throughout this uh, this very 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 deep topic oh man well i hope so and uh yeah i just i'm always have to have michael on the stream but michael is a not just an excellent game master and one of the best game masters that i have had the pleasure to play with but also a professional game master um who also likes game mastering for fun and who also uh, does both in-person gaming and virtual gaming. So at that point, I was like, there is nobody else who should be talking about this topic <laughs> except Michael. Michael has come here to do this. So let's kick off with uh, a question I'm sure some of the audience will be wondering. What is GM burnout? Like, what is it? What, 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 what? So, How do you know if you have yeah. GM burnout? What are we talking about even here today? <laughs> well, that's 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 po that's partially two questions here. What GM burnout is is very different to how we recognize it. So. GM burnout is uh, basically when you get to a certain point where your uh, mental fatigue has taken over, where your uh, creativity, where your passion, where your drive, your motivation, or, or maybe it's just even that that sense of like joy and, and wonder you get when you sit down at a table uh, begins to burn away at the edges. And, you know, burnout isn't just uh, you're burnt out or you're not burnt out. It's a long, steady process, um, which goes into when you recognize it. Some people no burnout when they get right away and they are just like yeah cool today we're just gonna take a chill day we're gonna go watch a movie instead of playing games and you take the rest and recuperation you need and burnout is just that it's just those days that you take off whereas for other people who uh push themselves through and continue until they're literally burning at the the, the very you know rough end um you can see things um, you can even see full-blown mental breakdowns. You said sometimes it's hard to tell if we even have this. So, yeah. you know, being able to isolate those symptoms, I think, is something that's incredibly important. I think the um, I think the first symptom of of GM burnout has to be uh, the moment where you start joking about not wanting to be at your game. 
And I know this is very weird coming from Australian because we like to have a lot of that sarcastic back talk where we like, we like, oh God, another game or oh God. But when you start doing that kind of like as the norm, as you do it as the regular, there's always kind of like a, an, an egg of half truth I find. And I think that's the earliest symptom you can tell when your GM is not having fun. If you as a player are sitting there and your GM is like jokingly complaining about uh, arriving at their game or how much effort they're putting in and stuff like that. That's a very quiet, almost passive communication that you're kind of reaching the the early stages of, of GM burnout. Um, um, yeah, I think that's the earliest stage. I think the, the second stage is um, exhaustion, right? This is like a very physical response. So instead of it just being something you're saying, it's something that you're doing. It could be uh, when your GM is there, maybe they're yawning a lot, maybe they're uh, like, you know, visibly, you know, bags under the eyes and stuff like that. You'll actually see that, uh, you know, like, or, or even, if, even if the fact that they're coming in straight from another thing, and they're just frantically trying to, to stay, you know, like kind of, oh, sorry, I really didn't prep this week. Uh, you know, everything just got away from me. And now I've got to do this. Now I've got to do that. Now I've got to do this. Um, you know, the physical is the, the second big symptom. The third symptom is where we start looking at dangerous territory, where AGM will start lashing out. DM will start um, start projecting a lot of that frustration onto their table. This could be encounters becoming a lot more difficult than they need to be. Every single fight is a near death encounter, or um, you know the NPCs stop really caring too much about whether or not you're you're interacting in a way that's going to be fruitful for the story, uh, and more just interested in pushing you along. Or we're still having absolutely no interaction. And it just being kind of like trying to move through these paces quickly. Um, Rocks Falls, Everybody Dies is a great example of, of that as well. <laughs> you know, like where you see someone who does just sort of go, no, I've had enough of this. And, and it's, it's kind of a passive way of them wanting to end the game. It's sort the of final throwing stages, all the toys out the pram, essentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In yeah. Australia, we call it taking your bat and ball and going home. You know, that, that's, mm. that's definitely, yeah. uh, definitely it. Um, the final stage, I think, is the worst one, which is where you start to um, abuse your 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 group, your party, and stuff like that. This this could be in the form of like verbal abuse, where you are calling people out on things, where you are lashing out, like just emotionally. Um, that is where it gets to that point where you're looking at a full on table party collapse, um, and potentially damaging your real life relationships with people. And that's kind of like the far end spectrum. These, these are the final throws of you not, you not coming back to D and D or Pathfinder or whatever game you happen to be playing, you walking out and being like, I'm done being a GM. That is what burnt out looks like. Yeah. And how about from the inside? You've talked a lot about external symptoms, which I mean, as players at the table or people who love our GMs, I think that's really, really important that we can recognize mm. these things, that we can see for our GM, they're really struggling. Maybe it's time to take a break or give somebody else a turn. We'll talk more mm. about preventing and fixing GM burnout in a minute because <laughs> there's a, that's a whole lot to unpack. But mm. how about from the inside? Like, I know that it's different for everyone, but... Um, what are sort of the internal symptoms? Like what, what might be running through somebody's head that you might be able to say, oh, I wonder if I have GM burnout. That's a very good question. Um, I think it's the same as like with a doctor trying to analyze their own, you know, symptoms and stuff like that. Looking inwards is a very tricky thing to do. And I think, uh, I think the, the hardest thing is recognizing where your limit is, because sometimes we like to think that it makes us stronger or better to push forward and to, to endure when really it means that we have to ignore the suffering, the, the, the kind of those little symptoms that happen with us. Um, internally, I think having reached burnout myself, um, uh, more than one occasion, um, I think the first symptom that I kind of notice for myself is when I show up to games and I have like no recollection of where I am or what I'm doing, like in terms of the, the, the story. And I just go, you know, screw it. I'll just make something up. Um, while there are plenty of improv GMs out there, and I'm sure that there are plenty of people who are really, really good on the fly, um, when you are doing that as your regular stay, when you are not attaching yourself to your story, your characters, your players and stuff like that, that's your, that's your mind telling you that you don't want this extra baggage. You don't want to hang on to this stuff that is important to your story because you need it for other things. 
And that's a good point. You know, yes, you're, that's your, literally your, your subconscious telling you, Hey, uh, I don't have room for this right now. And, um, you can definitely use those moments to be like, Hey, I need to maybe take a step back, take a breather, maybe work on some stuff a little bit. Um, I think beyond that, yeah, just those kind of like frustrating moments, those things where you find yourself either not looking forward to your game or, you know, being frustrated at your players or even at that point where you want to, you know, you're kind of like more excited about a different game. You know, these are these are the things that internally you can be like, oh, man, I really, really want to play uh, this new module that came out, but I'm stuck in the middle of this this thing that I'm like kind of met about, you know, but I'm going to doing it every week that's a great internal sign of like hey this is where you need to be looking at like your conversations is this the game we want to keep moving or is it time for something fresh something new you know so um i went to that bastion of internet research uh that (laughs) is reddit (laughs) and the reason i did this is because everyone's experience is different Um, I personally have never experienced GM burnout. I am a GM, but I don't get to GM enough that I have experienced GM burnout um, simply because I have so much other crap to do. But um, I knew that uh, Michael, that's Dead Aussie Gamer, would bring a bunch of amazing things. And I also wanted to to bring some other folks' experience. So I brought these all anonymously. I'm not going to call anyone out. I don't want to reveal anything. A bunch of these were were self-stated as throwaway accounts as well, because people feel very vulnerable talking about this kind of stuff. But what I have here is, I think of excuses not to run my game. If I can't get away with it, then I have to run it anyway. Or uh, when other people talk about their games being positive, I'm really uh, envious of their game. So I start to feel jealous of other people's gaming experiences. Um, I feel like my players are ignoring me or they're not getting what they want from the game. That was another uh, thing somebody said. Um, I get irritable with my players when they don't do anything wrong. Or I feel like I'm I'm tapped out. I've got no new ideas. That was another, another comment somebody said um, when they had GM burnout. They just felt like they were just coming up with the same old stuff or they just felt like they were going through the grind and it was so uninspiring for them. I think that was another, another really smart GM burnout moment where someone went, okay, I feel totally uninspired. Maybe I have GM burnout. You know, that's that's another symptom that can it, it can really hit for some people. And again, it hits different people in different ways. I love that. I love the idea of um, well, not the idea of it, but like the the, the notion that the inspiration um, when you run out of that inspiration, that it is indeed that 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 really good sign, because we uh, we are writers as GMs. Yeah. We are we are people. And, and when we when we get when we lose that inspiration to write our adventure, um, as I'm sure, sure many of the people who write book story, like short stories and novels and stuff, you get to a point where you hit this like this wall, and you're like, I know the next bit should be really impactful, but I got nothing. Um, you know, I got, I got, I got my pockets are empty. Every oh, like I used my best moves back there, and this next bit is just, it's just dragged on, and I just don't want to do this next bit. Um, very different when you're writing because that's just you and your computer. But when you're, um, or your typewriter, I mean, I don't judge. Uh, <laughs> um, but your if you're. Quill, ink, and yeah, stylus. Quill, yes, yes, no, you go, go get the scribe. Yes, bring it out. Yes, just write bring this down. Bring the chisel and the stone. Okay, we're getting <laughs> off topic. I'm sorry. <laughs> what, you and me off topic? No. Um, Never. But. <laughs> Never. But um, yeah, no, just the just I mean, that's the that's the thing is when you when other people rely on your um, on your creativity to to be um, almost like scheduled, (laughs) you know, because you schedule your games, right? Your creativity is scheduled Um, when when you when you lack it or when you when you lose it, it's hard to pick up. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. So we've talked a bunch about the symptoms and hopefully nobody here is going, oh my God, I have GM burnout. But if you think you might be in the early stages, then hopefully this has come at a useful moment and you'll be sitting there thinking, okay, 
That's awesome. Let's talk about the causes of GM burnout. And again, like the symptoms, this is a whole grab bag of things because everybody's different. Everyone has different stresses in their life and everybody gets stressed by different kinds of things, right? So this is not a one size fits all. This is a, this has to be a conversation because yeah, what causes GM burnout? All sorts of stuff, right? Yeah, no, absolutely. And um, yeah, like we said, there are external factors like completely unrelated to gaming that, you know, I mean, I think I'll just mention rather than touch on, but like, like I said, family issues, work issues, life issues, all these things that happen, they're in a big category. And the only way to find out about that is to talk about it, to ask your GM and to delve into that. Um, beyond that, I think, um, I think the first big cause is a sense that as a GM, you aren't being appreciated for the work that you put in. I think that's yeah. probably the the biggest thing, you know, because a GM has a lot of work on their hands. They they prep the story, they create the NPCs, they often have a really good understanding of the rules of the game that they're playing because they've put in the time and effort to master these rules. And um, sometimes when, say, players don't engage with something you've spent hours working on or when um, you've spent ages learning the rules of a game system that your players may just, you know, end up just constantly asking you and repeating the fact that they haven't, you know, understood these basic rules, they can wear you down. You know, it can feel as though you are unappreciated for your effort and your time and your energy. And you start to ask the simple question of why am I doing this? Why am I putting in all this effort for people who don't appreciate me? Yeah, I think that's very, very wise. And again, we're going to talk about prevention and cure, but players a lot. It's not all on us. It's not all on players, no. but there is a lot that players can do to help. And I think absolutely showing a lot of mm. appreciation, letting your GM know uh you know what you've enjoyed i mean even things like uh again i went to reddit to figure out the causes of gm burnout and bring something to this conversation um and one of the things that people said was my players are flaky i have players who mm. are flaky they they they're late they come without having leveled up their character and this just it crushes my spirit because i feel like you know i've tried so hard to be here for the game and then you know kevin damn Kevin comes up late and then hasn't done his work. Um, and that means that the game is delayed and everybody are like, we only have three hours to play. And then Kevin spends 40 minutes of that leveling up his character because he hasn't done what he was supposed to. Kevin is fictional, by the way, there is no Kevin, but, uh, <laughs> but maybe, maybe your table has a Kevin as a GM. And that's something that can really wear you down. I think as a GM, it really makes you feel underappreciated, right? Yeah, no, 100%. Absolutely. And, uh, and that's the thing, you, you know, there's also the, the you've also got to factor in the fact that most, um, most GMs aren't going to ask for appreciation or uh, even realize they need it, you know, until they get it. It's it's one of those things, you know, like I, uh, and uh, I, well, you know, what? I'll save it for the cure, because I've got a really, really sweet story about appreciation um, for, for, for a little later on. Um, I think the next really, really big cause of uh, GM burnout, and I, I understand I drink in the irony of this because everyone knows this is my biggest thing, uh, is when you just outrightly do too much. You spread yourself too thin because you've got a million and one different tasks and projects and things going on. Um, yes, I know. <laughs> for those of you, for those of you in the chat who may not know, I I am the um, I am the proud GM of anywhere between uh, ten to fifteen games per week, and I I I work hard. I work. I like today alone. I had uh, a game at uh, nine a.m. Uh, through to 12, a game at 12 till 4, then another game from 6 to 12, and now I'm here doing this before my game tomorrow morning, starting at uh, 8, going through to 12. Another game. What at, time is it where you are, Michael? What's the time right it, now? Look, it it might be 2 a.m., you know. It's 2 a.m. for Michael, but <laughs> it, he's amazing. He is. loves me, so he came on to talk to us I, anyway. Thank you, Michael. I do, I do. Janet Janet could really make me, make me go anywhere at any time, but... Um, <laughs> But understand this, um, as someone who did a Guinness World Record attempt, like a professional, you know, I, I 
saw medical professionals. I uh, trained for it. I did, uh, you know, nutritionists and, you know, a whole bunch of stuff was set up for it. Uh, I ran game. I ran a game for 86 hours. And so I learned so much about the human spirit, the human endurance. And that is why I value things like rest so dearly, not just for myself, but for other people. When we talk about things like how, how hard I work and stuff like that, that is because I know that at the end of that, I'm taking, you know, 14 hours just to sleep, rest, eat, look after my health and all of this other stuff. Um, and I'm even scheduling like moments where it's like, yeah, okay, cool. I've done, done work for, you know, 12 hours. I'm going to have a two hour nap or siesta and, um, you know, get ready for my next thing. The rest is such an important thing. And another major cause of GM burnout is when you do not have that rest, when you are going from one thing to another thing, to another thing, to another thing. And um, what happens there is a very similar feeling to uh, treading water. And then every time you're like, sort of like, okay, cool. I've got my campaign under wraps. Everything's good. My players are happy. My story is going good. And all of a sudden, oh no, I didn't really have time this week because all my work kind of caught up with me. Uh, I've got this really cool story idea and I'm going to start writing that. Uh, you know what? I'll get to your story in a minute. Okay. No worries. Uh, okay, cool. Uh, okay. I, I forgot your story last week, but that's okay. Um, I'm writing where we are now, you know, and it just adds and adds and adds and adds. And before long, we're just pulled under by, by that just excess of, stuff that we just yeah. put on ourselves and it's just slightly too much and you can't quite juggle it all yeah absolutely yeah and the other thing mm -hmm. is that it it only takes for one thing to go wrong or one thing to get delayed or you end up having an extra mm -hmm. meeting or a friend's birthday party or something and then everything ends up part of whack yeah 100 percent. yeah 100 percent. and um and yeah it it and we and and uh, i think a lot of that stems from the feeling that we let people down if we don't you know, yeah. like we like that feeling like we will. I'll let my players down if I don't have my game prepped or um, I'll let my players down if I don't include their story or the thing I gave them, um, you know, and, you know, we're the only ones who really hold that criticism to ourselves because we are like such harsh critics for the work that we do, you know, and GMing is like any other art form. We're presenting uh, our creation to people and seeing if they approve. And half the time, their approval is silent. They enjoy the game. They have fun. They go home. They enjoy it. And you sit there going, okay, what did I do wrong? Is everything okay? Did I do good? Did, I, did, did they enjoy it? Okay, I think they did. Like, no one walked off my table. Okay, good. Uh, I guess I'll do what I did last week, you know. And it yeah. stacks. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, there is another thing that I think it's important to talk about uh, mm -hmm. with GM burnout. And this is something I have experienced in a different field, which is writing so it can happen that you get so in the middle of your project that you somehow can't see the wood for the trees and you lose your motivation and this is something that happens in big stuff like running an entire campaign or writing an entire novel where you'll you'll start out and you know exactly what you're trying to do you know what your motivation is you know what your your touch points are we're trying to have this kind of fun and then at a certain point you lose track of that and then it becomes a slog and then you can't remember why you were doing the thing in the first place so i think this is something that's so important when you're going into any big endeavor you know i'm gonna say it the meta on world anvil is super helpful for this because you put your motivations and your inspirations and your touchstones and the kind of experience you want your players to have right there at the front of the meta so you can remember it um but it's very easy to lose touch with that you know, when you start off on session one, you're really clear on it. By the time you get to session 12, like three months later, and you're doing other stuff and life is going on and maybe you, you missed a couple of weeks because, you know, Kevin was on holiday. Bloody Kevin. And uh, Kevin. it's Kevin. He's just such a problematic guy, you know. <laughs> I'm sorry. Kevin does not exist. Um, uh, and all Unless of sudden, he does and then you know who you are. Right. <laughs> And then all of a sudden, you've sort of forgotten why you were doing this thing in the first place. So I would say keeping touch with your motivations, keeping touch with the core of your inspiration and your ideas. This is something that can really help you maintain the fire for the big creative slog that you are trying to achieve. That's something that's really helped me in the past. Mm. No, I, I completely agree. That's that's amazing. I, I think um, uh, I think it's really insightful. 
because um, you're right. Like motivation is just so, so, so key um, to everything that you do. And, um, and, you know, not having it is, is a big, big, big contributor to the cause of GM burnout. Yeah, absolutely. I've got a couple of other things that I think are useful, uh, particularly for in-person GMing. I'm looking mm -hmm. at my introverts here. Um, <laughs> in-person GMing is a performance and it's also socializing. When you are an introvert, that is a lot of peopling all at the same time. So make sure you take your space. That's what I'm going to say. Uh, sometimes as a GM, you can get over peopled. So uh, that's another thing that can cause GM burnout. If you're with people all day and then your evening comes and you're like, oh, no, the people are coming. And it's not like you love the game. You love the people, but you just want like an hour to just like sit in a room and play a video game by yourself because you are an introvert and you have to recharge. This is a thing that happens to introverts. Um, I'm a, I'm a bit of a hybrid, so it doesn't happen to me so much, but I have introverts in my life who need this, you know, they need that recharge time. And if they don't get it, then it just becomes incrementally harder for them to do the GMing week after week, uh, because there's so much peopling involved. Um, mm. I would say on the same space, the GM is also often the one who hosts. So mm -hmm. that adds a whole extra level. If you're not the tidiest person in the world, then, you know, before they come around, it's like, oh, crap, I have to, like, hide all the stuff and put the dishes in the dishwasher and, and make sure we have enough glasses for, oh, and I don't have any food in the house. And, like, there's all that extra stress there as well that could mm -hmm. also add to GM burnout, where it's not just the people and the game prep and everything else. It's also the fact that, oh, God, and I don't have snacks and I haven't done this and I haven't done that it can really get on top of you as a GM. So I think that's something that's really important to remember. The GM is not just the GM. Often the GM is the host. Often the GM is the performer. Often the GM is they're doing a bunch of other roles. Often they are the one that's taking the notes. We'll talk about that more in a minute as well. Like the burden mm -hmm. falls on them for so much or it can fall on them for so much. You know, if the GM looks at the table and says, wait, you guys have something that you picked up two sessions ago and all the players look to each other and they can't remember what they're talking about. That's another nail in the coffin of your GM's burnout right there. Your GM is going to go, mm. oh, and you don't want your GM <laughs> making that noise. That is that is the noise oh, yeah. that makes the GM sad. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's all That's all of his effort and creativity leaving his body. Yes. Um, along, with, uh, along with your chances of survival, by the way, just at that point, just... Um, I do have a solution, by the way, for the peopling oh. thing, which I will bring oh, yeah. up when we when we come to solutions. But well, do remind actually, me if I do forget. We are going to prevention and cure. Actually, oh Ooh, no, I, I like have one more thing. I have one more thing to say about burnout. I have one more yeah. thing to say about burnout. Um, there is a very wise thing that a very wise mm. man said to me once. Uh, his name is Leonard Schick. He is one of the law masters for Elder Scrolls Online. He's written for Baldur's Gate. He's one of the like founders of RPGs and CRPGs. This man is a legend. And he said to me, which I will never forget, it's all about what kind of fun we're having. And I think if there is a mismatch between the kind of fun the players want to have and the kind of fun the GM wants to have, that will slowly grind you both down. So there has to be an accord at the beginning of the game, or else the players want to run around and do murder hobos, but the GM wants to play a spy game. Or the GM has set everything up because they want to do kingdom building, but the GMs are really just like flying by the seat of their pants and they, they just want to ride every single monster that they find. They're not interested in doing anything serious. They want to play, you know, How I Met Your Mother in RPGs. Mm. Or whatever. These are very specific examples, uh, Janet, and they're far too close to things that I'm that I'm I'm in. Um, I'm not comfortable. I'm 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 trying my best. Okay. I'm not playing oh. anything with you right now, so I. This is not <laughs> <Yeah. for me. laughs> I, yeah. Yes, I know. I'm just I'm just dealing with someone who, who's who, who's like, can we can we ride it? Can we tame it? Can we can we climb it? And I'm like, no. First of all, that's a town guard. Secondly, he has a <laughs> wife. You know. Uh, yes. Everyone, those guards are untrainable. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and if you want to ride, you have to pay the toll. Complain. Yes, exactly. Yes. <laughs> that is a different kind of stream. 
<laughs> oh. But yes. No, absolutely. Oh, I just once worked. I once worked at a dinner theater show where um, the tagline of the of the woman who ran the show was, "It's not that kind of show." And I feel like that that should be the tagline for what you're doing talking about right now. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, I feel like that's just my channel. It's like it's not that kind of stream. Um, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, finding that finding that match together with your players. There's a there's a saying in writing: not every book is for every reader. So if I am mm. If I'm really into military fan uh, sci-fi and I pick up a sci-fi book, but actually it's a science fantasy romance, I am not going to enjoy that book. Even though I like sci-fi, that's not my kind of sci-fi. I'm not the mm. book for the, I, it's not the book for me. I'm not the reader for that book. That's okay. It's the same with RPG games. Not everyone is going to be a perfect fit for every GM. Not every player is going to be great with every other player. There's a, a consensus about what kind of fun we're going to have. And for a one shot or like a, a two or a three shot or a little, little campaign, that's cool. Like you can manage. But I think the longer the mm. campaign, the more it can really cause an mm. issue. And I think it's the GM that really bears that issue more than anyone else because they're the one that feels, like you said, so so wisely responsible. They feel like they're responsible mm. for bringing the fun to the table. And so any failure in that, particularly for some of us, you know, who, who are hard on ourselves, that's, that's something that we really take on personally. You know hmm. no absolutely and um and i think um i think the hardest thing is when you don't have that synergy with your your players as well it's not because you you haven't observed or you're not a good gm or anything like that that's 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 the thing is just we are all different and that's not something we we wear on ourselves but it is something we sometimes do regardless of the fact that it's not true um you know like when you have a, a player who likes to power build you know, and a player who likes to role play sharing the same table, you will have the player who likes to role play get into a conversation with the NPC only to disappoint the person who's power building. And he's just like, when's the next fight? Come on, just get to the point of it. Don't waste all your time with, you know, yada, yada, yada. And as a GM, you could sometimes feel that burden and be like, you know, yeah, oh, maybe I should hurry up. But then, oh, no, this person is like not having fun with that. But, you know, and there's no right answer. And there never yeah. should be, you know it's about it's about give and take it's about compromise it's like no you who want to go and punch something you'll get your turn this is that person's turn you shut the hell up I just, uh but you know <laughs> you just you just kind of play as you as you can to like table manage and um you know like do your best yeah absolutely absolutely um so I think in terms of GM burnout, we've talked about player behavior, we've talked about circumstances, we've talked about the burden of the GM, and we've talked about external factors, that stuff we can't control. Like I had a really terrible day at work today or some some awful thing happened and now I just, I just feel like I don't quite have the spoons or the energy chips or whatever it is that I need to run the game. Or I was just slammed this week and I haven't had time to prepare. And, and it's been like that for three weeks because my boss keeps making me stay late or something. Like th mm. these are all things that really cause GM burnout. Um, what about preventing GM burnout or curing GM burnout? I had these as separate questions, but I think prevention, prevention is better than cure for sure. Um, mm. How can we prevent GM work, uh, GM burnout? Um, so prevention, I think, goes a long way into how you build your table. You know, if I am playing with people in a public setting, for example, like I do for a living, for example, <laughs> uh, there's very little I can do in regards to prevention. I just kind of have to have my own measures to improve my own personal wellness um, maybe it's taking some time to enjoy some music I like or watching some inspirational movies that I enjoy or um, have, going out for a nice meal before I go to my GMing thing. You know, those little moments of happiness that then become closely tied and associated with your game. This is just self-care. And that's the important thing about prevention is if you maintain a good self-care routine, you will help yourself prevent GM burnout. Um, the the other side of uh, the preventing, if you are 
uh, playing on a game with regulars is to know your team, know your group, know who these people are. Are these people? If you know, my I, I like to I like to give what I like to call the couch test. Right? Imagine if you would that you had a couch that could fit five people. These are people who, in any particular order, could sit by beside you in order to watch a movie or to play a board game or whatever. Are you comfortable with these five people next to you? If the answer is yes, you have a good table. If you say, yeah, I'm comfortable with everyone, but, you know, I really don't want Smelly Jim to be too too close to me, then Smelly Jim might be a problem, you know. And if you want to prevent GM burnout, look at Smelly Jim and go, you know what, maybe, uh, maybe there's another game that is suited for you. Yeah. And for this game, let's find people who are going to fit on this couch, you know. Yeah. Um, and it's a simple, it's a simple rule. It's a simple thing. Um, and there are plenty of, and, and this actually, this is a really, really important one. Some people are better friends than they are role players. You know, yeah. just cause they're friends doesn't mean you should invite them to role play. Just like there are some role players who don't necessarily need to come into your personal day-to-day -day life either. You know, these are not tied together things while you might enjoy this and they might love spending time with you and want to spend time with you by coming to this game. If they aren't, uh, as you know, Janet, you were saying, you know, if they're not kind of in sync with what's going on with the game, with the table, with the story, with the people, then the best prevention me method there is to make sure that you as a person are in a environment that is going to encourage you and motivate you and keep you supported, you know, yeah. at all times. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I think I think everything you've said is, is so wise. Self-care is is kind of number one for all creatives and that mm. that stretches to everything from giving yourself time to do the thing not expecting yourself to do miracles with no time like that's also a part of self-care all the way through to you know making sure you're hydrated and you know like the, the basic stuff making sure you've eaten and slept and hi you're hydrated uh <laughs> And, and all of those things, right? Like self-care is a self-care is a spectrum, and it doesn't mean necessarily getting yourself a manicure, but you know, taking care of your your creative needs and your physical needs, and making sure that you you know we're all complicated plants. Making sure that the complicated plant element has been seen to is a really really important part of this. Um, and I think cutting yourself slack, if for example, oh I didn't sleep well last night, and then my session was terrible. Of course your session was terrible you didn't sleep well that's fine that's normal you're a complicated plan don't worry about it it's cool i think that's the other side of self-care is really you know cutting yourself some slack if things don't go your way mm, absolutely yeah uh making sure you have creative input is so important um so giving yourself it's like you said like taking time off to watch a movie or something making sure i get some sleep um but one of the things that I've seen in all kinds of creatives who get burnout is that they are putting out more than is going in. So mm. they don't have time to watch a movie. They don't have time to read a book. They don't have time to catch up on their favorite RPG stream that they love and gives them energy, you know. And, and as creatives, creative things also give us energy. So creating gives us energy, but we need to also get creative input. Things have to go in as well as coming out for creativity. And that can be as simple as, you know, like reading an article about some historical thing that gives you some inspiration or you know, getting excited and nerding out about a new season of anime that's come out or whatever it is. But we need creative input or we can't really be creative. You can't be creative in a vacuum. I mean, you can, but only for like three seconds. Yeah, then the vacuum, you know, starts explode. to like churn and explode. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, no, I completely agree. I think, uh, <laughs> I think, I think everyone's also inspired by different things, you know, Yes. Absolutely. like, um, like I, I find, and, and this is just, you know, sharing personal stuff now. Yeah. Um, for me, one of my biggest self-care routines, uh, involves my pets at home, you know, um, for me, there is nothing that recharges me more than being able to spend some time just quietly on a couch um, with, with one of my pets and just being there and, you know, just being supported, you know, um, I don't have to be doing anything work related. I didn't have to be doing anything game related, but I find that those moments are where my brain kind of slows down enough for me to be able to create stuff. And, you know, yeah, it, you know, it might be something completely irrelevant to, um, to writing or running your game or stuff like that, you know, 
for for you know, just for example. Yeah, absolutely. So for Dimitri, he gets all his best ideas in the shower. Again, mm -hmm. it's when the world slows down, he has time to think. Uh, I'm obsessed with museums. All of my best ideas come in museums or looking at mm. historical artifacts because I'm a big old nerd, but that's not new. You guys do that already. <laughs> um, but yeah, like whatever, whatever floats your creative boat, make sure you have time for it. Make time for it mm. if you possibly can. And I think that's a really strong tool for prevention. Uh, mm. We've already talked about players and the things players can do. That can be as little as turning up on time and bringing the snacks. It can be as much as, you know, helping somebody if you arrive early, um, you know, being like, oh, do you want me to get the dishes out? Or can I help with something? Or, you know, I've, I want to order pizza this time for the table because you did it last time, the last twice or whatever it is. You know, small things like that. Big things like I got so excited about the campaign that I've gone and written these three NPCs that are part of my backstory. Do what you will with them. That's something that's really meaningful. GMs love that. I have never had a GM that hasn't gone, oh my God, you did something with my story. You know, yep. GMs, GMs love that. It feeds into their creativity. No, absolutely. And um, actually, this brings me to that really, really cool story that I was going to tell you um, about showing appreciation to your GM. You know, yeah. um, there's so many different ways that you can do that to help your GM. And it always, always, always repairs burnout damage. I guarantee you doesn't matter doesn't matter if it's a hey i had a lot of fun today i just wanted you to know that i did have a lot of fun that simple phrase goes so far now um for those of you who don't know i work at a youth center here in australia teaching uh young at-risk kids um role-playing games to help them uh you know like just grow and evolve learn creative writing proper speaking you know stuff like this social um, skills creative solutions so, yeah. natural thinking RPGs all, all the... are amazing, amazing teaching tools. By the way, I'm getting off the soapbox. Mm. You continue. Sorry. Oh, no, 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 absolutely. No, dude, you're just basically just, just reciting my resume at this point. Uh, so it's like, yes, this is why I should have a job here. Thank you, government. Uh, but, um, you know, the um, we, had a, we had one young person who um, engaged with our youth center, but really didn't engage with people. He uh, would show up with with headphones on, with an iPad, and would not talk to anyone, would just sit down and pretty much run the clock from when their parents would drop them off and when they returned. After they started doing the DD program, they began looking forward to going to the youth center and looking forward to engaging with people. They began to make a lot more friends and you know lots of uh, meaningful interactions, not only at the youth center, but also outside as well. And um, one day I got a like, almost like a like a page essay from this young person's mother who told me just how much Dungeons and Dragons and my program had changed this person's trajectory on at li on life because they were worried this person was like like per, like they thought they were going to be uh 20 30 years old still living at home um with no job no income no motivation to do anything no desires to 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 be a part of the community or anything and now he's just constantly talking about this this thing that he's a part of and wants to do more with it and wants to continue to do, do more with it Amazing. even now he, even now this this young person who is now much older now he's in his 20s um is looking at doing programs for um kids who live on the spectrum um and teaching them role playing games and stuff and for me whenever i feel that burnout kicking in whenever i feel it really badly i read that letter and it's it's like a it's like a refreshing summer shower right like it just washes that burnout just off me when i when i read that because that level of like appreciation that that impacts me that's there's no description for it there's no there's nothing i could tell you to make you understand how much stuff like that means to a gm who is enduring burnout and um you know if you take my word for it do it like put it into words put it into a text um you know just say it to their faces however you want to do it if you communicate that it will mean a lot yeah guaranteed absolutely um, that brings me to one of my favorite tools for preventing GM burnout. It's so small, it's so simple, and actually, Dead Aussie Gamer is going to tell you about it because he introduced me to it. It's Stars and Wishes! Dead Aussie Gamer, <laughs> what is Stars and Wishes and why are they amazing? 
Uh, stars and wishes are like kind of like a thing that um, we, that I well let me, let me give a proper proper thing here. I didn't come up with the concept of stars and wishes. It is something that has been passed down from streamers to streamers. Um, I personally don't know who originated it, but I know that I got uh, I was inspired to it from my friend the dreaded GM. Um, yeah, but what the also but what, lights. also an anvil light. Also an anvil light. What the the thing I love about stars and wishes is what it is is at the end of a session you celebrate some element of the game that you want to highlight something that you thoroughly enjoyed something that you know you you kind of every time you think back on was this is like my favorite moment here and a wish is not necessarily a criticism but something as though you wish this may have occurred or you wish that there was an opportunity for something to have happened um Often we can like kind of get to a point where as a GM, and I know I do this all the time, is I always ask for critical feedback. I always say, how can I be better? What did I do wrong? How did I do this? But only taking the negative side of things gives you one side of the scope. Stars and wishes means that you can take a moment to breathe in that, that you know, appreciation and those moments that you excelled at and make sure that more of those happen. But then those wishes give you those little insights into like, you know, um, like, hey, I wish that... Um, that during the fight, you know, I wish that uh, I got a chance to use this really cool spell. Great. That's not exactly a wish that you can, you as a GM could do anything about, but it's still something the players wish for, you know. And um, and it's a really good rhythm to keep your game in because it means at the end of the game, there isn't that unknown, like, of whether or not your players had fun. Everyone always has fun, you know, in moderation to whatever you're doing. And this is just a great way to express it. So, yeah, that's what stars and wishes are. And um, we do them when we can. Uh, they can take a while. I'm not going to lie. Um, I know that there's uh, some methods of practice which involve giving stars to each and every individual and then uh, giving wishes and stuff, which, um, you know, which I, I like. Uh, but on stream, a 40-minute stars and wishes can be a bit taxing. <laughs> That, that's because on a live stream, everyone gets so like gushy and excited. Um, oh, so do. We, do, we do Stars and Wishes at our table. It is one of the best changes I've ever made to in-person gaming. Um, Stars and Wishes is a way to let everybody at the table know how much you enjoyed the game and to mm. do call outs for things that were great. And those can be, for example, I love that scene we did with the GM or, oh, my God, that moment we had this in our in our last game, that moment where Jose got axed in the chest and then charged full throttle and almost killed the person who axed him immediately. Like next, next, next move. It was like axe, look down, charge. It was amazing. It was like the timing was it was beautiful. But I mean, wishes can be anything from oh i want more of this in in i i'm looking forward to more of this or i wish we had more role play or you know i wish that we we were a bit more organized about how we do reactions to something because like everybody was talking over everyone and i couldn't get something these are all wishes and it's not necessarily you should have done this or such and such should have happened it's something that's much gentler and in a much more positive way but uh, wishes can even be, I wish for your character this thing. You know, like, I love your character so much. I wish for them that they have this thing. So we have a witch in our, in our again, this is, this is the last session. We have a witch in our campaign who has, can punch people with her hair. It is the best thing in the world. And also has poison nails. She's amazing. We love her. But both of them do really low damage. So uh, we are, we want to get her some, like, super cosmetics that will give her like extra hair strength and extra nail strength to do more damage. We need to take her to the evil witch salon and we are looking forward to it. This is, this was the wish. And so it's a way of, you know, creating head cannon. It's a way of creating futures that the GM can also pull on of like, this person has this desired future and that person has that desired future. What can I do with that to make the game more exciting for the next couple of times? Um, Stars and wishes, man. It's I think it's an absolutely golden tool. It makes everybody at the table feel appreciated. It's a very positive way of giving feedback and talking about the game. Stars and wishes. If you take away one thing, take stars and wishes to your table. It makes everything better. Sorry, that was a bit of a rant, no, no, but I'm just no, no, no. I, 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 no, no. You, you ranted everything that I was going to say about it. No, I, I, I agree. Stars and wishes are are definitely a a huge, huge and wonderful tool. And um, yeah, I think I think um. 
I think also celebrating, uh, taking a moment to celebrate yourself as well is super important. Like taking that moment to actually, uh, even if it's just a routine to say, what did I do really good today? Um, you know, I think that's also a really, really nice little practice. Yeah, absolutely. I try to do it, but you know, no, I think sometimes that's amazing. So, yeah. 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 So like, uh, it's really funny because sometimes I'm like, man, I really wish I threw a Hydra in there. No reason. Just. Arr. I was feeling very Hydra today. Yeah. I was feeling very Hydra today. <laughs> uh, so we've talked about preventing GM burnout. We've talked about, you know, being aware of how you're feeling, creative input, self care. We've talked about how players can prevent GM burnout by, you know, being a good person, not causing. Be a cool dude. Don't be yeah, a Kevin. Just, just don't be a Kevin. Just, just <laughs> ease away. If there's anybody listening to this, if there's anybody in the future listening to this podcast, listeners, who is called Kevin, you are loved. Don't worry. I'm sure you are not that Kevin. It's all fine. Unless you are that on. Kevin, in, which, in case, which case, do better. I believe in you. Be better, man. Yeah, I believe in you. Let's talk about fixing GM burnout because we talked about preventing GM burnout, which is all well and mm. good if you're not there yet. But if somebody's sitting there thinking, dreading playing the game, never feel prepared, always, always needing more energy, just, just, mm. I don't want to do the thing anymore. How do we fix GM burnout? Uh, okay, before we get to that, I had one more prevention thing, if I could throw oh, yeah. that out there, oh, just one, super yeah. quick. I want to, I'll take the shot on this one. All right. Um, when you're at a game, actually, hold on. Let me, let me, let me, let me just get real close because I want, I want to tell you all this. I'm talking to you, you, this person here, who is running games, who is, you know, doing an amazing job. Um, I want you to know this: during your games, while you're playing, even when your players are um, discussing what their plans are, they're maybe checking their sheets, see how many hit points they have got, whatever reason that they've got. Remember this. At any point in time during your game, you can say, hey, guys, we're just going to take a quick five-minute drinks break. Go away. Nothing wrong with it. Honestly, you can just go and read some books, or you can go outside, get some fresh air. You're allowed to do that. Take a break during your game. No one's going to hold it against you. I'm not going to hold it against you. I've done it to my players all the time, and there's nothing wrong with it. It's one of the best ways to prevent GM burnout is to know that if things do get rough or if you find yourself unable to improvise something, that you can just stop and it's okay. No one's going to judge you. No one's going to think poorly of you. I will, in fact, me, the dead Aussie gamer, will think better of you for, do for doing it straight up. Okay. That's it. Thank you for that, Michael. I think that was really important. And, you know, that mm. we often feel the impetus to as GMs to know everything and see everything and, and do everything and have all the rules. But again, if, if you have a rules moment, it doesn't even have to be like, you know, you're a bit worried or a bit anx anxious and you want to take a break. It could even be mm. guys, go get yourself a drink. I need five minutes to look this up because yep. I'm not the encyclopedia. I'm the fun machine, you know, yeah. like I, I do the world. I do all the other stuff. I don't necessarily know every single rule in the book, but I'm going to take five minutes to look it up. Don't watch the panic flick through a book. Go yeah. get a drink. <laughs> Just piss off. Go do go do other things. Go go run around. Go yeah. You know, be free. Walk run yeah. in a stream. Or send them send them for a snacks run. Send them to go bring, mm. you know, go bring those snacks. Go on, go to the supermarket. Yeah. It's five minutes away. Yeah. Come back. Exactly. Here. I mean, don't get, do it if you're a live streamer. Fill you with a hydra. You know, like if you're a live streamer, you know, don't send your players out for a, a no. thing run. That that's that's no, a bit no. weird. That's, that's but um that, yeah, that's but, that's a recipe for chaos. Don't do that. Uh, that but that in, is, in an in-person game, completely realistic. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. And you know what? It it helps so much. There are so many times that I'm like, uh, okay, I guess you've gone that way now. Um, cool. Um, go away for ten minutes. Go make some chicken nuggets or something. And then I like pull up my books and I read up my notes. I draw up my maps. You know, I'll I'll take the time to just create there and then and you know yeah like seriously so much so much help preventing it. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. But that's the last prevention one. Let's talk fixing. How do we fix things? Can we fix it, Janet? The answer is yes. However, I'm going to give it a big caveat. There is a limit to what can be fixed. And um, 
where we define things that where we define things that cannot be fixed, we'll talk about later. But for now, if your GM is burnt out, the first thing you can do if you are the players is offer to run a game. Yeah. Give them a chance to take the player's seat and enjoy the session. Um, as someone who, as I mentioned, runs so, so, so many games, there is nothing I appreciate more than people offering to run a game for me. Um, it's it's one of those moments where I feel just I am able to express a different kind of creativity that I'm able to enjoy. And as you were saying, Janet, like absorb that inspiration from other sources and and replenish myself. It is one of the best and most efficient ways to fix GM burnout is, yeah, often, often, often to do it to your GM. Um, what do you think? Yeah, no, I, I think that's 100% true. But so many GMs sort of, how do you say, they, they, they condemn themselves to be the forever GM. And I think that that's a twofold thing, because I think there's a lot of players who want to be the GM, but they're very shy or they're very nervous or they feel like they'll never live up to the GM who is currently GMing, right? Because they're, they're really experienced. So then they don't even voice that. And then on the mm. other hand, there's this poor GM who's, you know, feels like they have to GM because nobody else is taking on the role. I think having a conversation about, hey, shall we, shall we just try swapping for a minute? Can I, can I run a one shot or can I run a two shot? And then you can have, you know, two weeks, two weeks game prep for free. Um, I think it's something that's so valuable and I think something that can really, mm. really help. Oh, a hundred percent. And you know, what's, um, what's really interesting about it is, um, is even if like the, even if like a break isn't needed, just the offer is often, you know, a good enough gesture for people, you know, like just the, just knowing that it is, is an option for, for other people is, is absolutely wonderful. And, um, if, even if Kevin decides to run uh, a game, um, it's still appreciated. It makes Kevin a better person. Kevin is better. Seriously, Kevin's, Kevin's back Kevin will box. learn what it's like to have players like Kevin if Kevin's not careful. And that's also <laughs> an important learning experience. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, GM burnout. Um, it's a tricky one. Again, you kind of have to do post facto all the things that you should have done when you were also becoming burnt out like you gotta take some time off sometimes uh don't be afraid to be like guys i need two weeks off from this campaign we can play board games we can watch a movie i will not be running a game for the next two weeks i need some time off or yep. you know you you gotta you gotta set those boundaries for yourself you gotta you know if you are completely burnt out you have to just just set a boundary and say okay i am now burnt out let's hang out in a different way for two weeks or let's not hang out for two mm -hmm. weeks and we're going to be doing something else or let's go to kevin's house and watch a movie for the next two weeks mm. no you absolutely know? and and the thing is it's okay for that to happen i um and i hope i'm not oversharing because again I, I i'm talking about a lot of experiences that i've had here uh but i'm actually uh going through a scenario right now where one of my gms uh, who I work with is uh, is experiencing that is experiencing burnout uh, to a degree. And, you know, it's hard because sometimes we feel as though if we take that time off, we are disappointing people. We're not, um, you know, kind of fulfilling our, our role to like host or to um, to entertain or to any of these other things. But, um, you know, like these are things that we need to kind of overcome as our own hurdles and be like, no, 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 these are, um, these are within our rights. These are within our abilities to take those breaks and to enjoy. Um, but, um, but it can often be hard. So another great way of fixing GM burnout is to um, be able to not only take those breaks, but to make sure that it's okay to take those breaks, you know, that you're not, um, you know, constantly, I mean, I mean, again, like I love, I live in Australia. We always joke about stuff. And like I said, even joking about like not wanting to be at games or joking about the fact that the GM is not, you know, there at the game or the GM wants to take things. Those things are damaging, you know, 
Um, if a GM wants to take a break or is doing that, be supportive of them, you know, like again, offer to, you know, host something else, even hosting a different location is a, is, is a huge and welcome, uh, welcome change to things. Um, you know, um, while of course there would definitely be time for that playful banter, um, you know, if a GM is suffering burnout, that playful banter, um, does kind of eat away at it and you want to avoid that. You definitely want to avoid like adding to those stresses um, or exacerbating those concerns that they may already have, you know, like, and it's always a half truth. You know what I mean? Like it's, you know, half jokes are always have, have that nugget of like, um, like when, when you say like, oh, you know, I, I really wish, um, somebody else could run this game. You know, you're kind of like, ha ha ha. I really wish someone could run this game. And then there's another party that's like, I really wish someone else would run this game, you know? <laughs> um, and you got to listen to that. You got to hear it. You got to hear the whole, the whole piece, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, just just being sensitive and having these conversations, I think it's something that is so, so critical because at the mm. end of the day, at the end of the day, you know, RPGs are about people more than they are about dice or rules or mechanics or, you know, Hydra's eating all the players or anything else. You know, RPGs are it's it's imaginary, imaginary fun with friends. Right. So mm. at, at the end of the day, whatever, whatever the contract that you've got set up, it has to be fun. And if it stops being fun for whatever reason, you've lost RPGs. Like you're not doing it right if it's not fun anymore. So something has to change. Um, oh yeah. And I think that's that's what I want to leave you leave you with today before we go to our audience questions. Is you know if you're not having fun anymore, something has to change. Don't just sit with it and expect it to magically get better by itself. Don't just sit there gradually burning out like the dog in the meme and be like, everything's on fire. It's fine. You know, mm -hmm. I'm fine. Everything's fine. It's not fine. Take steps. Okay. Look after yourself. Can, can I, can I do, can I do a scary moment now? Yeah. Here's the scary moment. Mm. The scary moment is, is I've seen it. I've seen the edge of burnout. I, I've, I've never gone over the edge, but I have come so, so, so very close. Um, there have been times where I have had to stop. Otherwise I would have quit streaming. There are times where I have seen people, uh, enraged and act physically violent at games. Burnout is real. And it is not a button you want to push. It is not a contest. It is not a, it is not a victory. You know, like we, we can sometimes joke about it. Like how much can we do? Like, you know, when I say I do 10 to 15 games a week, I'm very proud of that fact, but it's also an affirmation for me to be aware of how careful I need to be about what I do and how I do it, you know? Um, and it should be for you guys as well. It should be a case of like, um, like prevention, is maintenance. It's about keeping ourselves good. And if keeping your game running is not the motivation for you, remember that the end of this road of pushing yourself isn't to go, oh, well, this is as far as I've gone and to turn back and walk, you know, to where you were comfortable. Yeah. The end of that road is a large and steep cliff where you don't play anymore. Yeah. And Hanging I've up seen, the I've, yeah, that's it. And I've seen so many people um, that have done that actually heartbreakingly, I, I, I recently received, cause I'm, I'm a big fan of, uh, elder dice, um, which like one of my favorite, like, you know, dice box sets, I've like backed all their kickstarters and stuff like that. And this person, uh, just came into my work, uh, while I wasn't there. And this wasn't someone I I'd played with. This is someone who had other games and stuff like that. And he left me like $700 worth of like dice and materials and stuff mm -hmm. like that and said, and said, this is for the kids because I'm done. I'm not playing anymore. And I was I was blown away. It just came out of left field. Like I knew he was having kind of issues with his game and stuff like that. But it just broke. He he snapped. That was that just that point in he he'd gone over and that's all it takes. That's that that's it. It's not a it's not a big kind of like it's not a point where you sit there and you go, hmm, this is my edge. It's you just go over and you don't even realize it. And you know, it's, it's heartbreaking for me because, you know, I love this game. I love, I love RPGs. I love what it does for people. I love how good it can make you feel. And, uh, I want nothing more than for people to embrace and love, 
uh, love this this thing that we do. And, yeah. Um, you know, yeah. My God. Yeah. Don't let mm. it get to that point, guys. Just, just not, go take a break. Hey, Troll Lord Game has joined us. Uh, hey. <laughs> we are talking about GM burnout and how to fix it. We've been talking about how to uh, support your GMs. We've been talking about mm -hmm. how as a GM to recognize GM burnout, to stop it before it gets its teeth in, and what to do mm -hmm. if you already have GM burnout. And now we are going to go to our audience questions. So if you guys have questions, throw them in the chat. We'll get to them very shortly. Um, how at, can I, as a player, asks that game a share? How, I can put it up. Wait, I have technology. You ready? Technology. Screen. How can I, as a player, help start the conversation in the most diplomatic way possible if I suspect my GM is suffering burnout? That is a really good question, Gamer Share. What are your thoughts, Michael? Mm. Um, there's actually a, uh, a really good mental health charity here in Australia, and it, it, it's all in the name here. Are You OK is mm. the, the charity name, and it encourages exactly that just simply ask are you okay it sounds very basic it sounds you know kind of a thing um but yeah just ask your gm hey are you okay don't ask them like straight after a game sorry i should caveat that don't get to the end of a campaign session and be like are you okay because the immediate thing that gm is going to think is why what was wrong with my game holy <laughs> what, what what happened no no like you know, like just in general, like sometime during the week, you know, reach out and just be like, hey, are you OK? Uh, you've been GMing for a long time. And I thought, hey, maybe would you like a break or are you doing all right? Like, how are you finding the game? How are you finding the campaign? The more you ask and the more you inquire about the experience your GM is going through, the more you are going to be able to uh, open up that conversation. Uh, just Again, don't do it at the end of a session because that's, I think, when a GM session, GM stress level is pretty high. Um, or even bef even directly before a game, I think, could also be kind of dangerous. Definitely don't during derail the week. your GM is what we're saying here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, 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 100%. Yeah. Sometime during the week, just be like, hey, how's it going? Maybe if you're good friends with GM, actually take them out to a setting to talk about it because, you know, that's how social skills work right like you go to have a coffee and be like you know how's life how's things how are you going i'm loving the campaign by the way this is amazing shower praise shower praise shower praise how do you find the game you know great ways to segue into um learning whether or not they're suffering burnout um yeah. also if they're throwing things then maybe <sighs> tell them yeah that that's a good sign just be if they're throwing things you know just be like hey uh, are you okay because you, you you hit me with your dice you know, when you, when you threw it at me. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully it's not that bad, but I think you're absolutely right. You know, start yeah. starting with a simple, are you okay? How mm. is, you know, can I help? What's going on? How are you feeling about the campaign? As you say, in a setting that is neither immediately before or immediately after they have to actually run the campaign because insinuations and neurotic GM brain is a thing. Yep. Um, I think that's, that's very, very wise. Um, so we have somebody here who is having some problematic players. It's a big question, so big, it's covering our faces. But uh, basically what they say is, out of game, the players are really good friends. In game, all of the characters seem to be ganging onto this one PC. It's got to the point that every single interaction is about this. Uh, they've talked to the players outside of the game to try and change it up and find a role-playing solution, but nothing has changed. They're at the point of just telling their players to, to change how the characters act or just make new ones. What are your thoughts on this? Because this is this is a tricky one, you know, when when players get it into their heads that, you know, one of the players should be worn down or something. What are your thoughts? Mm. Whew. All right, so this is a this is a big one, and this is a very specific answer. Um, so I'm going to hopefully help out as best I can, um, and I'm going to start by saying this: um, every GM has problems. 
it's how we manage them and how we deal with them that is always going to be the case. And I really appreciate the fact that you were able to approach and sort of bring this up and uh, and ask this question. Uh, Janet, can I see the question again? Just so that oh, I, yes. I can answer it. Sorry, I put it down because it was so enormous, but I will that's find okay. it. That's I, okay. I was going to sit up. I was going to be like, okay, there we go. See, there, there we just... Mm, see, I have to know. do this too. I've got to, I've got to sit really high in my chair so that I'm visible yeah, above the okay. question at the bottom <laughs> of the screen. Okay. So um, in terms of ganging up on another PC, first of all, uh, if you are really good friends and stuff like that, it is something that you should or can just talk to the other player about. How do you feel about this happening? How is this um, making you feel? Because sometimes you have characters who do have that understanding of it and they're accepting of it. That being said, there's also those sneaky people who don't want to make a fuss. And you've got to be able to identify the difference between someone. Like, for example, I can play, and Janet knows this about me, I can play a character who is, say, a goblin called Squeak who is just there to be afraid of everything and get my teeth knocked in by everyone and be picked on. Because Janet knows that we are such good friends that I could happily play this character and never take any of that personal stuff on. But that's not necessarily the case with everyone. Um, now, the thing is, is if that situation is making you as a GM uncomfortable, like let's just say, for example, that they are all okay with it, and you as a GM are like, man, I really don't like the way that these guys are treating each other. And I really don't don't like I'm not really being inspired by that. Then you have every right to stop the scenario and say, hey, guys, listen, I'm really not enjoying the, the dynamic here. I'd really like the opportunity to like maybe help improve everyone's point of view from this character's perspective. What can I do to like maybe help facilitate that? What are you what are you what are you guys finding an issue? And they're like, well, he keeps trying to sacrifice us to the dark lord every time we sleep. We kind of just get angry when he does that, so we're just kind of lashing out at him. It's like, okay, cool. Well, have you considered not sacrificing them to Cthulhu? You know, and then having those that kind of mediation, which is again something a GM can do. But um, opening that dialogue, even if you're uncomfortable, you have every right to open that dialogue as well. Um, you've talked to the players outside, which is wonderful. It's a great first step. Um, but, uh, until someone puts in that point or that, that firm, like this is something I need to change so that I can be comfortable so I can run the best game that I can. Um, people will often try to go the route of least resistance, especially, you know, hashtag introvert fam, you know, like we do not want to make a fuss. We don't want to rock the boat. We don't want to make ripples. Um, we will, we will do what we are told. And that is, that is just the nature of it. Um, but, uh, but you do have, you do have a chance to, you do have a, a good opportunity there. Yeah, absolutely. And I, again, I think communication is really key. Um, mm. and it's not just about, I don't like how it's affecting the party as a GM, you also get a vote. Like you're also there for fun. If you don't like how the game is going, like I don't do PVP at my at my table. It's not that's not the fun for me. The fun is cooperation. The fun is teamwork. The fun is, you know, wacky misfits coming together and uh, doing, you know, having hijinks and mad adventures. That's how I like to play D and D. So if people get really mm. PVP and somebody wants to play an edge lord mm. rogue, then they can do that. But my table is not the place for that because it's not fun for me. And I also get a vote. You, the GM, also get to vote. So yep. if all those fails and they're not listening to you saying it's not nice for the player, just say, it's not fun for me, quit. That's what I would say. Like you, At the end of the day, you're the one that makes the world. You're the one that tells the story. So um, yeah, you also get a vote. <laughs> you do, you do. And I, I think that is, ooh, wow, yeah, that is definitely all we have time for today. We have gone over because, Michael, you're too interesting. Sorry, my bad. <laughs> it's been such a pleasure having you here. Michael, who are you and where can we find you? Hello! Yes, no, uh, my name is Michael, I'm the Dead Aussie Gamer. Um, you can find me over on my channel at twitch.tv slash Dead Aussie Gamer, where I do a bunch of TTRPG stuff with my friends, family, and the like. But uh, more than anything, I am a entertainer. I, I go around the place where I am needed, for I am summoned. When uh, a, a dice rolls three natural 20s at the same time, I will be there. Uh, you, yeah, is there a Michael signal that shines it's the just, Yeah, it basically comes out and just gets the cloud. Trouble is, is it's, it's, the, it's a 13-hour flight from Australia, so, you know, I'll get there. 
you know, it just takes me a while. Uh, but <laughs> more specifically, you can also find me uh, on a couple of different shows. I am over doing Careful Cantrip at the moment uh, as part of their season two campaign, playing the role of Basil, the nightmare wielding warlock. And uh, I'm over as a regular member of the Tavern Guard with Quincy's Tavern, uh, which I do some cool, cool, fun stuff with. And very recently, I have also joined uh, my our dear our dear friend Guy on How to Be a Great GM as one of the regular members of his new uh, Dragonlance campaign, which mm -hmm. we just finished our first little chapter of that. And we're on a break while he's in D&D &D in a castle, but we're going to come back for more stuff later on as well. Um, there's one last thing that I'd like to give as well, and that is, of course, something I sent to Janet, which is my Discord address. I'm going to give you guys my Discord address because... Uh, as I said, one of my big mission statements for my channel, for me as a content creator, for me as a human being, is uh, very much um, uh, mental health, wellness through gaming and the like. And if any of you guys are suspecting or feeling like you might be having some GM burnout or the like, I invite you to come to my Discord and reach out to me. There is literally a channel... Uh, for Ask Dag, so if we didn't get to your question or if you want to ask me about uh, some troubles that you might be having at your table, I'm not joking when I say I am probably one of the most experienced GMs in the world. Um, and, you know, if you had been playing a game every single week since the 1970s, I've still played more games than you. Uh, you know, I've Michael seen it all. Like I've seen five to six too many. games a day sometimes. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, so... It's uh, it's a thing. And, you know, sometimes it can feel like we're very alone and that we're isolated because, you know, if our other friends aren't GMs as well, it's, it's difficult finding people to talk to. But one thing I am more than anything else is I am an open forum for people who need help. And if you want that help, please, please don't hesitate. Come to my Discord, hang out, just say hi, and uh, you, you'd be welcome. Yeah. <laughs> well, that is all we have time for today. So I want to wish you a very happy international gms day look after yourselves look after your gms and look after each other and of course grab your hammer and go well build